Hey everyone, so in this video I want to show you how to make these cool animations of your printing uh, process that I think looks more cool than all these common uh, time lapses. And for this tutorial I was inspired by these very cool TikTok videos by 3D Fit. Yeah, so check him out. I have my model ready in Prusa Slicer. It's just a simple GoPro mount that I need to print. Uh, I'll make just some few basic adjustments and uh, then slice the model. And when your G code is ready, we're gonna use this feature of uh, Brucia Slicer uh, exporting as OBJ. If you don't use Prusa Slicer, you can also use this import Chico Blender add-on, but it didn't work for me. And I'm afraid that it doesn't work all the time. Anyway, let's open the exported model in Blender. Yeah, and don't be confused as I was for the first time, because the model will be imported in much bigger size and i think it's due to different unit settings of blender but you can change them in uh, scene settings if you want here you can see we have all the path uh, g code information we need for our animation effect let's uh air for rotate by 90 degrees minus 90 degrees and scale down with S. For the animation, we're gonna use a build modifier, which will make faces of our model uh, appear over time. And if you want, you can change the length uh, to the same number of your 3D painting layers if you want your animation to go a frame by layer. If you move the playhead somewhere in the middle of the animation you can see that the animation is not in the correct order so we will sort the faces order by going to edit mode and let's uh, control 3 to select faces and A to select them all now in mesh uh, settings we can sort the elements uh, by Z axis which will sort the elements from back to front so we need to go to top view in order to animate like from the bottom to top. And if you play the animation now, you can see it's in the correct order. Yeah, and now let's create this camera move one, which is quite easy to make. We have our model already here. I will uh, turn off the animation for now, so it won't slow down my computer. Uh, let's move the playhead <clears throat> to frame zero. And we will create something like a camera rig for our camera. So let's first select a shape that our camera will follow, which will be this uh, curve circle, or we can use any other curve. I will make it bigger with S uh, so it will fit around our object and move it with uh, G and move it up. And for the rest of the camera rig we will need this uh, empty cube that we will uh, parent our camera to. Let's uh, move the camera uh, to the center. You can reset the transform location uh, values with Alt G and the rotation values with Alt R. And now select the camera and shift select the cube and we will right click parent uh, parent object. If you move the cube now uh, the camera should move along. So for the cube we will use object constraint uh, follow path that the center of the cube will follow the circle and the camera of course will move uh, as well and don't forget to change it to y axis and minus z if you change the offset value now you can see it spins around the 
object. So that's what we want. And let's add another empty that our camera will follow. And again, move it on the place where we want our camera to follow, which is the center of the object. I should have moved the model to the center or changed the cursor in the beginning. So don't be as stupid as I am. Anyway, let's add a track to constraint to the camera. And as a target, we will choose the ante. And if we go to the cube uh, and change the offset value, you can see it's uh, working. So let's make just some few adjustments. Maybe uh, set the camera angle a bit higher and scale the circle so it will fit the whole object. For the animation, we will just add keyframes. So on the frame, uh, zero and then uh, another keyframe with the change the offset value on the frame where the build animation ends and in the end I added plane as a background and some lighting to the scene and let's turn on the build animation and you can see it's working it's ready to be rendered you can also maybe add some colors or something. Mm, let's try to make this version with the motion tracking. Uh, first, uh, we're gonna need this workspace called motion tracking, which you can open uh, right here. Motion tracking. Pull this up so it can work with the motion tracking. And I will import this uh, reverse to the video where I took off a camera of a tripod. So just drag it over to Blender. Might take a while to load. Before we start tracking, on the left side change the motion model to location, rotation and scale. And move to frame zero. And now we are added to control left click to add these tracking markers to some area with clear color pattern. For example, this corner where the white lines are crossing. And now same as in the layout workspace, we can ask for scale. And also change the search area with Alt S. And we can track forward with this button. Some areas it might stop. Uh, in this case, it was due to the motion blur. But we can manually adjust the position and track forward again. And we only need to track the list frame where it stops moving. And we can see it perfectly sticks to the corner. To solve the camera motion, which we need uh, for our model to stick to the table. We need eight of these trackers. So I will speed up this process. Also to say that I didn't find any better way to work with this uh, vertical widow. So the following uh, workflow will be a bit weird. Now when we have 8 of these trackers, we can go to the solve tab and we're gonna change this keyframe range uh, to where our tracking ends, which in my case is uh, frame 79. And we can solve camera motion and also set up tracking scene. And we go back to the layout uh, workspace. Uh, we have this ground set up, uh, so we will scale our model to fit on the ground. Also in a composing tab, we have this node set up, but we don't need to change anything there. But thanks to that, we have uh, this video preview in the camera view. And if you enable uh, the motion tracking viewport overlay, you can see the motion tracking doesn't fit the ground. 
and because of the vertical video I use uh, I will rotate this by 90 degrees but normally you don't have to and also rotate this model to fit the ground now for the tracking points to match the ground I will select three of them and set them as a wall but normally you would set them as a floor if it was a horizontal video and you can see the tracking points are now exactly on the ground so now the only thing that is left is to match the position of the of your object in your video and in blender in the end i just uh, added the build animation again uh, added some lights to the scene so it will match the lights of the original video and uh, also use the ground as a shadow catcher which means it will be transparent but only uh, the shadow will be rendered and also you might uh, change the colors of uh, materials uh, it might be quite cool uh, if it matched the 3d printed uh, product in your video and that's all for this tutorial uh, thanks for watching and i hope you learned something and feel free to give me some advice in comments thanks bye